Hey guys, what is going on? And welcome back to another episode of Career Mode. This is episode number eight, and here's what's coming up in today's episode. I'd pose this question to you guys, my head of youth development, and I really feel it's only a question that you guys can answer. So we've arrived here at Stanford Bridge on a chilly Sunday afternoon in early December for our first West London Derby of the series, and I am so, so excited for this. But it's Manchester United through for the first chance. It could be 1-0 already, and it's not. Sergio Rico has been in fantastic form all season long with another brilliant save. And, of course, on the back of the last episode where we had our first youth scouting update of this series so far, we've got two players in our academy, and one of which has already been given a pro deal. I thought to start today's episode off, I'd pose this question to you guys, my head of youth development, and I really feel it's only a question that you guys can answer. This is your decision, not mine, and that is... Should we get a Scout Future Star? Because you guys have been asking me since the start of the save to get one out of the catalogue. Of course I've got enough credits to buy one, no doubt about that. But I was just curious this season as to whether we should only get our academy players through the youth scouting system ourselves as opposed to having a wonder kid just pop up in the academy out of nowhere. But you guys have been asking for it, so I thought why not give you guys a decision today. First question for you guys to answer today, and it's a big one. Should we get a Scout Future Star? There's a poll in the top right, it's totally your decision. And if you vote yes, in the next episode, we'll go and redeem one. It's your choice. And as you're right to jump into the first game of today's episode, out to the international break, returning to Craven Cottage on the back of our 1 0 defeat away at Liverpool in the last game, the last episode. Speaking of youth players, I'm making a massive decision for the first game of today's episode. 16 year old Jay Baker, who we put in our academy and subsequently gave a pro deal to in the last episode, he's going to make his first start in a Fulham shirt in this game, taking series plays as part of our 4 3 3. What a test for the 16 year old today. And as for the Southampton team, right now, this sat in 19th place, just two wins picked up all season long. Uh, they're lining up in a 4-4-2, a pretty decent defence and the attack's not bad either. Nolo Gabbiadini and Shane Long, their strike partnership. Given Jay Baker number 28 as well, uh, he was originally wearing 13 at the academy, which I kind of liked, a Baker's dozen, right? But uh, I gave him number 28 instead. And uh, I'm excited to see how he gets on here, because our midfield's been pretty consistent to start the season off. To take Seri's place, our highest rated midfielder, he's, he's got a tall order today. Let's see if he can match it. Tom Kearney on the ball, slides it through to David Neres in behind Ryan Bertrand. Great chance here. Now I see Sessegnon at the far post. Oh, Ryan Sessegnon, who's just scored a contender for goal of the season already with his first of the year. I saw him at the back stick. Neres gets his second assist of the season. And Ryan Sessegnon, I mean, how often do I say this? You're going to score your first goal of the season. Make it a memorable one. Ryan, don't do it to him like that. Oh my goodness, when we discussed this guy pre-season, our hottest prospect, I didn't realise he was capable of that. 1-0 Fulham, what a goal. Goal scorer for Fulham, number three, Ryan Sessegnon. Oh my, I've got to watch that again on the replay. David Neres sent down the right-hand side. It was a perfectly weighted ball to the back stick, and Sessegnon, look at the technique on that. Absolutely glorious. I really like Jay Baker's reaction as well. The boys out of the academy got to stick together. These guys are going to be bros in this Fulham team. Baker buzzing for him. Well, I don't know how we're supposed to keep our concentration after that wonderful goal, but we're going to have to try. 14 minutes in, leading by one, and a chance here for Baker to release Ryan Sessegnon. And Sessegnon's through again! And it's saved by Thiago Volpi and put behind for a corner. He's had a slow start to the season, Sessegnon, by his high standards. No goals or assists until today, but now he's making up for it. Fantastic start. Well, that'll do it for the first half. One moment of magic by Ryan Sessegnon has separated the sides. That goal was glorious. There's not much been going on since that, but we're still up by a goal and 45 minutes away from a return to winning ways. So often is the case in games that at times can be a little bit of a damp squib. It's a moment of magic or an individual error that separates the sides, and it seems like it's going to be the former in this game. You know, neither team has played especially well out there, but Ryan's moment of superb improvisation has given us that goal. And I tell you what, Jay Baker on his debut has played very well this afternoon. And unfortunately, right on cue, that's a poor free ball to Mitrovic for his first misplayed pass of the game. He's done well out there, 16 years old, and he's handled the pressure well. And here he is finding a bit of space. Have a go, son, have a go! Oh, not too far wide there. Baker lets it run across his body and finds Brian. And Brian gives it him straight back as he'll find Sander Burge. Burge into Kearney as we look for an opening here. Baker on the ball. Back to Sander. And out wide is Brian. Nice and passing on, and moving as Sessegnon finds Kearney. Lovely build up this. Can we find an opening? Neres. Oh! 
Oh, Jay Baker shot the flex and put behind for a corner. Lovely little build up that. And the 16 year old, he's going for a goal on his debut. Kearney's corner. Mitrovic's header off the crossbar. And cleared away by Southampton. We're so close to that second goal. Corner for the Saints, whipped into the centre. Header goes up and behind for a goal kick. It's going to be a long 15 minutes here. We're still leading by a goal, but now under the cosh a little bit. Saints looking to find that goal. Well, that should do it. We look as though we've held on for the win. And there might be a chance to wrap it up here. It's Seri. It's Andre Schürrle off the bench for the win. Digs it off the post and Southampton will get it away. The chairman inches away from his first goal of the season. But that will do it. Final score. Fulham 1, Southampton 0. A cracker of a match though. And Ryan Sessegnon, superb individual bit of brilliance, separates the teams. Back to winning ways. What a big three points. Felt we deserved to win the game. Southampton did get some chances late on, but really for the majority of the match, we were the better team and deserved the three points. And is there any wonder for man of the match? Ryan Sessegnon getting his first of the season. And what a goal, what a goal it was. Beautiful technique, wonderful little spin and a brilliant finish into the back of the net. Fulham 1, Southampton 0 and a return to winning ways. So just before we move into the second game of today's episode on the 1st of December as we take on Chelsea away at Stamford Bridge and our first West London derby of the season. Really excited for that. Uh, we've got a scouting update and an academy update as well as Pape Cisse has now hit 75 overall but can't get in the team due to how good Tarkowski and Morrison have been. Uh, we're going to see how good our youth players are. Currently the Netherlands isn't really getting us the players we're hoping for. Sadly, no one good yet, but hopefully third time's the charm. Oh, this one's worth a scan from England. It's not been great either. Ollie Price and Connor Cook could be okay, but for now, I think we'll keep them in the scouting update. Come on, Cameroon. Give us someone good. Ugh, 28-36 overall. I don't think so. Damn, this is this has not been a good one. We uh, Okay, there we go. Mbaga could be all right. We'll continue to scout on him for now. The, the first month of scouting, two players in our academy, one's already made his pro, uh, pro debut for us, but unfortunately the second month's worth of scouting, oh, that's horrible, that's terrible, man. So right now that means there's just one player still in our youth team, that is indeed Alfre Adama. Do you know what? Like, the, the decision is still there for yours to be made. Should we get a scout future star? Based on that month's worth of scouting, I think there's only one answer. <laughs> It's a game, really, we don't have to sell for you. It's got such a fascinating history. You know the interest. We could have sold the stadium out, what, five, six times over, I reckon, because of the history of the rivalry here. Hopefully it lives up to the billing. So we've arrived here at Stamford Bridge on a chilly Sunday afternoon in early December for our first West London derby of the series, and I am so, so excited for this. Taking on Chelsea away from home, had a poor start to the season in the game right now, sitting in mid-table. We all know the quality they possess, and we are going to be underdogs for this game. They're lining up with a 4-3-3, great defence, superb midfield trio, and what a great front three as well. Hazard on the left, Willian on the right, and Dzeko, their leading striker. And we're countering their 4-3-3 with our own one, no changes to our line up on the back of that 1-0 victory over Southampton. So Jay Baker, the 16-year-old, will once again start this game, his second in a row, and hopefully a repeat performance from him, and hopefully another wonderful goal by Sessegnon and three points for them. I'll take the draw, though. Let's see if we can get it. Come on, the boys. We've already provided an upset this season. We beat Arsenal at home. Uh, away record has not been bad against big teams either. We drew with City, we drew with Spurs as well. Of course, our last game on the road was that defeat to Liverpool. So, certainly up against it in this one. But you never know, right? And Sessegnon finds Jay Baker. He's found Neres, who's put it wide. Brilliant work from Sessegnon and Baker. The kids out of the academy. Lovely reverse ball. Great ball across to the far post. And Neres, oh, that is inches wide of that far post. Perhaps even millimetres. So close to sneaking in. Chelsea escape. Should have hit the target there. Weaker right foot for David Neres. But again, this is why we're training is finishing up. He's got everything but that clinical finish at the moment. As Jekko goes for goal and fires it wide at the post. 14 minutes in. There are goals in this game today. No question. Yeah, it's a chilly old day out there when you can see the players' breath. Still tied at 0-0. We started the game off okay, but if Chelsea get the first goal, that's what I'm really fearful of. Because like against Liverpool at Anfield, if we can see the first, then the pressure is off. But the longer we keep it at 0-0, the better it is for us. Eight minutes to go in the half. Still tied at 0-0. Game sort of died down a little bit after a couple of early chances for both teams. That's okay for us. We would definitely take a clean sheet at a point here, no question. But here is Eden Hazard. Oh, and Dzeko couldn't control it. We're giving it straight back. Hazard goes for goal and fires it just off target. Can't give them the ball on the edge of our area. If 
final chance for Chelsea before half time. Kovacic to Hazard gets it back off him and shoots and forces a great save out of Sergio Rico. Still goalless. This will be a good result so far if we can hold on until half time. But Chelsea looking for that goal right before the break. Headed away. Where is that half time whistle? Shot deflected. Cleared away. And that will do it. Still 0 0. That's a good first half from us there. Just past the hour mark. Still deadlocked at 0 0. We defended so well in this game. We're not giving Chelsea a clear path to goal. They can't break us down. They're trying through balls, but our back line is smothering the opposition forwards. And as things stand, they, they, they can't get inside. We're doing superbly. It's just over a quarter of an hour worth to go in the game. We are still deadlocked to nil-nil. And as things stand, set for yet another clean sheet. Sergio Rico's got more than anyone else in the division so far. As Neres tries his luck and Kepa makes the save. This will be a great result for us today. And we'll deserve it too. Golo Kante, ball through to Willian. Into the final six and a half minutes. Cross the middle. Tarkowski clears. It will drop to Van Ginkel in space. And Hazard. Sergio Rico with a save. Big stop by the Spaniard. It's now or never for Chelsea in stoppage time. Hazard's corner to the centre. Edin Dzeko. Oh, what a goal. And the Bosnian has won it to death. And the Blues are going to take the three points. He runs all the way to Sarri. Chelsea won. Fulham nil. And they've stole it right to the death. I mean, I say stole it. I don't think that's the right word, really. They have been the better team. But Edin Dzeko has just tried to one-up Ryan Sessegnon. What a brilliant goal. Great corner by the Belgian into the near post. And Dzeko evades his man. And what a brilliant finish with the acrobatic effort. On the line, Lemar Shan can't get high enough. He gets a touch on the ball, but can't get it over the bar. Hits the underside of the crossbar and goes into back of the net. Oh, actually, he's gone down as an own goal. He's gone down as an own goal. Why? That was clearly going in. And Lemar Shan claims the spoils. What for? And that's it. Directly from kickoff, the referee blows for full time, and Chelsea have inflicted our second straight defeat away from home and nicked it at the death. The West London derby we knew was going to be a great one, and in the end, a great goal separates the teams. Sometimes you just got to tip your hat to your opponent and say fair play. What a winning goal that was. Fantastic from Dzeko. God only knows why it was taken off. It was clearly going to cross the line had Le Marchand not touched it. But Chelsea, I'd say, just about deserved the win. They played really well in this game. 58% possession. But we didn't play badly at all. There were a lot of pauses to take home from this. And I'll give Man match the game winner. For some reason, I had a goal taken off him. But Dzeko, glorious goal, man. Seriously, two fantastic goals to separate two games today. Brilliant. Doesn't make it any less heartbreaking, of course. But still... We we're going to jump into the third and final game of today's episode on the back of two fantastic 1-0 scorelines as we take on Manchester United away at Old Trafford, so it doesn't get much easier. And our Jose side lining up in a 4-3-3. They've left some key players on the bench, including Pogba, Lukaku and De Gea as well, but still a really, really good team with a front three of Sanchez on the left, Lingard on the right, and Cramerich, their striker. But they're not the only ones rotating on the back of back-to-back -back defeats away from home and two defeats in our last three. We stay with a 4-3-3, make a few changes to our lineup though. Cissé comes in for Mawson, Seri comes in for Baker, and Calvert-Lewin comes in for Mitrovic as well. We know this is going to be such a tough test for us. We'll be very, very lucky to leave with a point. But as Manchester United through for the first chance, it could be 1-0 already, and it's not. Sergio Rico has been in fantastic form all season long with another brilliant save to deny Alexis Sanchez. Chilean sent forward, one-on-one, -on -one, comes out to meet him. Fantastic stop. Obviously, we've drawn with Manchester City and Spurs, both away from home. And at home, we've beaten Arsenal as well. So we are capable of playing against the big boys and doing quite well. But I feel like on the back of those back-to-back -back defeats away from home against the big teams, we are now starting to feel a little bit more pressure than before. As Matic on the turn finds space, excellent block by Tarkowski. And we'll get it clear, though. Just can't afford to concede the first goal. Need to keep it at 0-0 for as long as we can. Six minutes to go. Very little going on in this first half here. We have won ourselves a corner. And Kenny's going to take it into Sander Bird who got his head to the ball and it's six foot five probably should have done better Cissé tracks it down Tarkowski going for the acrobatic but straight to Sergio Romero we've done okay in this first half defended really well but like against Chelsea can't switch off for one second otherwise we'll get punished for it just like against Chelsea there's only been one time Manchester United have been in in inside our area and Rico is equal to it we're still tied at 0-0 45 minutes to go this time can we close out the game Obviously, there's so many fixtures to play in December. It's a really tough and physically demanding month for any team. But to get Chelsea and Manchester United out of the way early, straight away, probably the best thing for us, really. But what we really want to do is try and get at least one point 
from these two games here to give us confidence moving forward. Oh, it's Calvert-Lewin, it's the post. And Manchester United get it away. There are chances for us to win these games, not just get the draws. Neres going for goal. Shot blocks and put the eye for a corner. I'll tell you what, in this second half, we're not settling for a draw and keeping ourselves back. We're, we're pushing high up the pitch and going for a late winner, which we could get here with 10 minutes to go. Kearney's corner, and Mitrovic is just off the bench. And you know he can hit them. I don't even know what happened there. I was pressing circle about 50 times in five seconds. And Mitric heads the ball off the post with his first touch. United to get off the line. Cissé and Mitric both tried to scramble it in. Neither could do so. And the Red Devils escape. How did that ball stay out? Twice we've hit the woodwork this afternoon. First Calvert-Lewin. Now Alexander Mitrovic. If Manchester United nick it at the death, I will be livid. But here's Zambo to Mitrovic, and out wide is Dominic Calvert-Lewin. He's had a great game this afternoon. He always puts in a great shift, Calvert-Lewin. Lots of work to do. Now can he pick out a cross at the far post arriving? It's Johansson, who's put it wide. Actually, do you know what? There is one final chance here. Zambo to Neres. Back to Zambo, back to Neres. Phil Jones comes across. Deep cross to the back. Stick is headed away. Pogba clears, and that will do it. And we claim ourselves a point. I would have taken it pre-game. It's a really solid result. We've had draws against Spurs, Manchester City, and now Manchester United away from home as well. It's a really good clean sheet, but reflecting on that, we could have won it. Look at these stats at full time, man. We should have won it. 13 shots, 5 on target. Twice we hit the woodwork, and the ball is cleared off the line as well. So desperately unlucky not to leave Old Trafford with a famous victory, but a point is still not a bad result, and we'll still be glad for it. Going back to Craven Cottage. Man of the match once again to James Tarkowski, though. The sign that the transfer committee has made has been an absolute revelation. We would not be anywhere close to as good as we've been defensively this season. League's best defensive record in terms of clean sheets without Tarkowski. Man's been a monster. But that will in today's thrilling episode of Career Mode, guys. So a big thank you for watching. Really hope you have enjoyed it. And if you did enjoy today's episode, then please do drop a like. As like, so of course, very much appreciated. And you're the channel as well. Much love to you all. Have a fantastic day. And don't forget my head of youth development. I'm asking you guys today to vote in the top right. Should we redeem a scout future star? Yes or no? The choice is yours. Thanks for watching. Much love. And I'll see you for the next episode very soon. Bye.